Hey, everybody, this is Adam the Bull, and it's time for my latest podcast on the Bet Rivers Network. This is the Bullpen with Adam the Bull, and it is a somber day. It is a sad day because I wasn't planning on doing a podcast this Wednesday. Uh, in fact, I'm talking to Ian Eagle, uh, and he's going to be on my podcast on Thursday. I was very excited about that, and we will still have Ian Eagle on tomorrow's podcast. So make sure you check that out. But just minutes ago, Deshaun Watson is out for the year. Here is the statement from the Cleveland Browns. I, I, when I first read, when I first read the tweets, because I saw Mary Kay's and I saw a few others, and I'm like, no, this is can't be right, right? It's got to be a fake. This is a fake tweet. This is a Mary Kay. Somebody's just pretending to be her. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Um. And we're going to talk all about it. Let me give you the Brown statement, and then we'll dive into it. The Cleveland Browns, uh, here's the statement from the Browns. Deshaun Watson underwent MRI, an MRI on Monday on two injuries sustained on two different plays in the first half of Sunday's 33-31 win over Baltimore. Imaging on his left ankle revealed a high ankle sprain. In addition, post-game, Deshaun notified our medical staff of a new discomfort in his right shoulder, shoulder that he felt after a hit in the first half. An MRI on his right shoulder revealed a displaced fracture to the glenoid. Despite performing at a high level and finishing the game after consultation with Browns head physician James Voos and industry leading shoulder specialist Neil El Atrash, I think is how you pronounce his name, it has been determined that this injury will require immediate surgical repair to avoid further structural damage. Deshaun will be placed on season-ending injured reserve, and a full recovery is expected for the start of the 2024 season. I'll dive into what all this means in just a moment. Uh, Get extra value this football season with Bet River Squares. Went up to $10,000 in bonus money. Bet $10 in same-game parlays on any game with the Squares icon to earn a square. The bullpen with Adam the Bull, part of the Bet Rivers Network, is next. You're watching Adam the Bull on the Bet Rivers Network. So I read you the statement from the Browns. Obviously, this is devastating news for everybody in Browns country. After I realized this was real, I looked at my wife and I said, you know, I've never, ever in my life believed in curses. I don't think they're real. I think it's all nonsense, all the stuff people talk about. But for a moment in time, I said, maybe maybe curses are real. And I still don't really believe it when I think about it for a moment. But this finally felt like a year where the Browns could do something special for the first time in a long time. Now, I'm not going to be 100% doom and gloom. The season is not over. You still got games to play. Crazier things have happened. Nick Foles came in for Carson Wentz and won a Super Bowl. I'm not saying anything's impossible. I still think the Browns have a decent chance to get in the playoffs. We'll get to that part of it in a minute. But there's no way to argue that this isn't devastating news. Even if P.J. Walker improves, he's never going to be as good as Deshaun Watson. Yesterday, well, before I bring up this part, let me read you this other tweet. This from and, and Andrew Berry. Um is going to speak today, uh, so he will address the situation at some point this morning. From Tom Pelissero of the NFL Network, Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson wanted to be shot up and play through the injuries, and he sought multiple medical opinions per sources. But doctors were clear if he got hit again in the same spot, the shoulder could fall apart. Now surgery awaits and his 2023 season is over. I mentioned this yesterday on my podcast. I mentioned this yesterday on the TV show. If you want to be critical of Deshaun Watson's play last year, first couple of weeks this season, fair. You want to talk about the off the field stuff? We could debate that till we're blue in the face. You have the right to feel however you want to feel. But for former players, And fans to talk about this guy's toughness just because you don't like him was way out of line, way out of line, including Brady Quinn, who made a complete fool of himself. 
the fact that Deshaun Watson played through what he did. He had a broken shoulder and played and was 14 for 14 in the second half with a broken shoulder. This just sucks. It sucks ass. The fact that he was able to start pulling it together with the injuries just stinks. We had to listen to the Baker bros whine about an injury every time Baker made a bad throw when he stunk two years ago. This guy playing through injuries with a broken shoulder, broken throwing shoulder, played a really good second half and didn't miss a pass. And this just stinks. It stinks. And remember at the trade deadline, which was uh, 15 days ago, I went on a crazy, angry rant, you may remember, about the Browns not acquiring a backup quarterback. And then for two weeks, Deshaun Watson played well, and I kind of said, okay, all right, I guess, you know, what what are you going to do? I don't want to worry about it. He's playing well. Let's not worry about it. Well, now you're in this situation again. And now there's no question. He's done for the season. And now you got to turn to either DTR or PJ Walker. And that stinks. It'll be interesting to see what Andrew Berry says today. If there's any clarification, if there's any talk of bringing in a veteran at this point. But the best veteran out there was Carson Wentz. And he signed in the last couple of weeks. He probably gave you the best shot. Not that I love any of those guys. Um, it's just, it just stinks. Can't make a trade now. Obviously the deadline has passed. I did see Jake Trotter of ESPN suggest that the Browns might go to DTR instead of PJ Walker. Either way, I, I, you know, and PJ Walker, the Browns won two of the three games he played. I get it, but it's hard to have any faith at all. The Browns don't beat Baltimore with P.J. Walker or DTR. They just don't. Aditi Kinkapola just texted me, said the same thing I did. I can't. I, and she's like, I give up. It's curses. It's cursed. I, and she doesn't believe in curses, same as I don't. It's just, I mean, this, uh, this just sucks. Browns fans, you guys don't deserve this. I'm heartbroken for everybody. I really am. I, I this was man. So, but the Browns have to find a way to to keep going. They have to find a way to move on. The team's got to find a way to win. Um the Browns got to find a way and I I do think they ha- they should add a veteran. I don't know who, what the answer is. Uh, but Carson Wentz, obviously off the board. I mentioned that. Uh, so what are the options? Can you call Tom Brady? He's now a, a part owner of the Raiders. I'd make the call. Can you call Matt Ryan? He's now a broadcaster on TV. He wasn't very good last year, but he's obviously better than PJ Walker. At least he was. I mean, I don't know what kind of shape he's in. Last season, in his last year in the NFL at this point, playing for Indianapolis, he actually completed 67% of his passes. That's very good. Good completion percentage. Actually better than his career completion percentage. He threw 14 touchdowns in 12 games, which is all right. 13 picks. That's not good. And he, he has thrown 50 picks in the last four years. But he's also thrown 84 touchdowns. So it's desperation time, folks. The Browns have a chance to go to the playoffs. Now, I don't think they can win in the playoffs with they can't. I just don't think they can win in the playoffs with P.J. Walker. They might be able to get there. There may be just enough wins left out there for him. Maybe it's going to be hard to make the playoffs with P.J. Walker. And I don't know how much better Matt Ryan or Nick Foles are at this point, I, you know, and whoever else might be out there. A.J. McCarron, I think, is on the Bengals practice squad. 
Uh, there's guys on practice squad they can go after. You can bring back Colt McCoy. I don't know. Joe Flacco. Trevor Simeon. He was with the Bengals in training camp. And some of these guys just might not even be better than P.J. Walker at this point. But you got to search high and low and give this team a chance. I, I, it's going to be interesting to see how the team responds on the field against the Steelers. I think the heart this team has played with, they will respond. And I still I still am leaning towards the Browns winning this game. I'm curious to see what the spread changes to. On the Bet Rivers uh, sports book, the line has now changed. The Browns were four point uh, three and a half point favorites. It's all it's only dropped a, a point at this point. Right now, it's two and a half. The Browns minus two and a half. I think that will move uh, between now and game time. But right now, it's minus two and a half. I just got uh, this from one of our guys at Bet Rivers. Um. Here, let's see. Browns odds from yesterday and after the Watson news. Yesterday, plus twenty eight hundred to win the Super Bowl. They were the tenth choice. Today, plus five thousand. Yesterday, they were the sixth choice to win the AFC. Plus twelve hundred. Now, plus twenty five hundred. Yesterday, they were second choice in the AFC North at plus two twenty. Now they're tied for last at plus five hundred. This team's shown a lot of heart. A lot of guts, a lot of toughness. Deshaun Watson, as a leader, showed a lot of heart, a lot of guts, a lot of toughness. Can they keep doing that despite another ridiculous level of adversity here? That's what we'll start to find out. All right, folks, I'm going to end it now. But um, thanks for watching and listening to the emergency podcast here of this terrible, devastating news to Sean Watson. Broken shoulder. He's got a high ankle sprain, too, which is unbelievable. Out for the year. Uh, I'll be back on tomorrow. We'll do another podcast tomorrow. The great Iron Eagle, who's going to be doing the play-by-play for the Browns and and, uh, Raven, uh, Browns and Steelers, he will be on with me. We'll talk about what he thinks about how this is going to affect the game and the season for the Browns. Ian's just the best. So excited to have him on. We'll also give you the latest on what Andrew Berry said tomorrow and and a whole lot more. Plus, watch me on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, of course, today and tomorrow and Friday. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast, please. Just click the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you any money. I'd really appreciate it. So I can continue to get out all this content about the Browns and other things to you, the great sports fans. I know it's a tough day. This sucks. We'll have more updates tomorrow. Thanks to Brian Monzo for producing. We'll talk to you next time. Where else? But right here in the bullpen with Adam the Bull, brought to you by Bet Rivers. See ya.